All right, you mad modelers. Uh, I guess you're back for part number three of the camel build. Um, this is going maybe a two or maybe even a three part on the cockpit. There is a lot involved here. We're going to try to make the part that you see on the left look like, you know, the instrument panel on the left look like the instrument panel on the right, which is a photograph that was taken from a real soft with camel. Okay, this is an air pressure regulator uh, that was meant to control the amount of pressure, air pressure that went into the fuel tanks. The fuel tanks on the soft with camel were, well, the fuel was fed to the engine through air pressure in the tanks. There was no fuel pump that directly moved the fuel to the engine. So, in the cockpit of the camel on the right hand side you had an air pump that like a bicycle pump that you put air into the tanks and then with this little unit you adjusted the pressure that went to the tanks now this little part was made out of brass tube and brass sheet so this is all oh and a little tiny aluminum knob which i turned on my lathe this was all scratch built. Now you see the pressure regulator mounted to the instrument panel. Uh, alongside it, on to the left, is your airspeed indicator, which was cable driven, and you can see the cable housings coming up from underneath the, the instrument panel. On the far left of the panel was what was called a bubbler. That was to see how much oil was being fed into the gas because the rotary engines, like a two-stroke, had to have oil, which was castor oil at the time, included with the fuel to lubricate the engine. That little bubbler was made uh, from brass stock, round brass stock, on my lathe, and the glass part was a Christmas tree light bulb that I melted and took the top off and put a little bit of clear yellow to my paint on the inside to hopefully represent the oil. Now we will move on to the compass. This is a photograph of an actual compass out of a camel. This is what we're going to try to duplicate. Here's the compass itself, uh, fabricated out of sheet brass. Okay, onto the compass housing. To the extreme left, you can see a little form that I made. Uh, next uh, with some uh, plastic sandwiched in between next pick shows it being heated and pulled over the end of a dowel that i rounded off in my lathe the one in the middle shows the rounded part the next one shows that if you have two parts you can make a whole ball and the very last picture on the right shows the the completed ball with the completed compass inside now that compass rolls around uh, on three different axes so that it doesn't matter what part of the where, where the plane is located that thing will always be level to the earth in this short video you can see how the compass itself is caged in such a way that it will always stay you know level to the earth or where the center where where the g-forces are taking it so that uh, it will rotate in the three different axes. Okay, here you see the bubble of the compass on its mount. The mount is made out of two pieces of plastic PVC pipe, one inside of the other, and then cut for the, the beams to hold it up. Uh, the gray parts are pieces of uh, sprue from a plastic model kit. And here it is again after it's all been painted, bolted down, and a nice little brass bezel put on it. Okay, here on the left, you see a picture of the real hand air pump from a real camel. A uh, picture in the center are the parts that I made on my lathe. A piece of brass tube, a little bit of wood, you know, spring, that kind of thing. A little knurling, and far right is the finished air pump that I made. And here is the finished air pump mounted inside the cockpit. You can see it right there, just right of center. Okay, the two switches on the, the real camel that were used for the magnetos, I decided I was going to 
use them one the left one to turn the radio on and the right one to turn my ignition to my engine on so i fabricated some housings out of some brass tube and brass plate and wired them in now, After on the, the real covers, panels were there was painted, a couple covers over they those were literally switches screwed that on were really to the end of the switch from your home and as you a go. light switch. Um, I so, in order to duplicate good. that on the very far left, after the, the little bottom covers of the picture, were painted, you can see a dowel they were that I have screwed on, carved the end into of the switch, a itself, positive mold. There you go. Uh, what I'm going to um, make, I think, for they the look covers for those two switches. I impressed that into clay. After the little covers through some epoxy in there, they were and I get a mold on to uh, of the end cover of the that switch you can see right in the middle and the bottom of the there image. There you go. Okay, so that's the end of part one of the cockpit build and part three, I believe, of the camel build. Uh, I will continue the cockpit on part four, but for now, this picture is a sneak peek of how far I have gotten to that point. And to follow this is a video showing it even further along. So please like and uh, subscribe. Okay, you can see that the uh, foot panels right there cover up most of the linkages. Uh, you can see a little bit of the aileron control horn down here in this corner. Right about there. And that's about it. Um... I wanted to keep everything as hidden as possible. So that's my camel update for right now. Oh, by the way, those foot uh, uh, foot areas, I used uh, some 800 grit sandpaper and I sanded them and then polished them to make it look like there's uh, the boots have been on them. Uh, there's holes in the backside I still have to screw to uh, the floorboards. Other than that, I'm going to press on.